All right, welcome back to Lightroom Classic, and we are on video number three. And this is actually one of my favorite things to do in any browser, and this is the culling or tagging process. So what in the world does that mean? It's very simple. Culling or tagging is the concept of going through your images and selecting the ones that you like. Now, in this case, I've downloaded a whole bunch of images that I'm gonna be using throughout the tutorials. So they're all completely different, but usually when you're taking photos, you're gonna have 10, 15, 20 of the exact same images. You're not gonna tone all those images. You're only gonna usually adjust or tone one or two of the images. So let's just say it's a portrait and we'll switch it to this woman right here. You know, we might've had 15, 20, 100 portraits from this situation, and then we narrow it down to one. That's what the person's gonna want. They're not gonna want 10 different versions of this picture here. That'd be way too repetitive. We're gonna be using a process called culling is the actual name, but also could be called tagging if that's what you'd like to say as well. Doesn't make a difference, both doing the exact same thing. So how do we do that? And that's the process that we're gonna go through here. There's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm gonna tell you my favorite way to do it. And usually when I tell you a way to do something, it's because it's the fastest and the most efficient. What are we gonna do? Well, first of all, you can see I made a big image. And remember, you can come down here to where the grid is. Now, if your grid is not sorted the way that you want, change it down here. So you can do by add, added, edit time, rating, whatever you would wanna do. In this case, capture time is what I usually like, what I shot first, what I shot last. We also can control the thumbnail size. I don't usually look at the thumbnails up here. Occasionally I do, but, but most of the time I'm gonna come over here and click on this button. And don't worry, we'll get to these here. Now the process that I use to tag is I'm gonna be adding stars. You can see right here, that's one star, two star, three stars, four stars, five stars. So how do we get the stars? Well, I'm gonna show you the slow way first. You can come up here to photo. You can drop down to set rating and you could just come over here and hit one star and boom, just like that, I gave it one star. It told you right up here, one star. And then if you wanted to give it two stars, you can go to photo, to set rating, over. And now you see two, two stars. But over here in the right-hand corner, this pretty much has to do with any Adobe program. Whatever you see on this right-hand side is the quick key. So the quick key to add two stars, in this case, is the number two. Just to let you know, it might have a command or a control before this to do it as well. This could have been something that I changed on my computer to get just the one star or the two stars, but a lot of these programs you can toggle between either hitting just one or command one on a Mac and control one on a PC. All right, so let's go back up and we're gonna just take a look to see what those are. So set rating. We will go to photo, drop down to rating, and you'll see zero is to remove the stars. One for one star, two for two stars, three for three stars, four for four stars, five for five stars. You can use the left-handed bracket to decrease the rating, the right-handed bracket to increase the rating, which I've never actually used because you can just hit the number three. If you want to go from four to three, you just hit three and it goes to three. You've already got your hand over there on the stars, so it makes it a whole lot easier. You can also label by colors. So I can go to number six is red, seven is yellow, green, blue, purple. And I think in some of the programs you can actually change these colors. The only weird thing is if you wanna remove the color, you actually have to physically go up here into photo, set color label, and then hit none. There's no way to quick key it. I'll do a purple one just so you can see it. It made that little purple line around the image right there. That's the way to set the color. Um, I don't set colors in Lightroom. I just use stars because it's a whole lot simpler. Let's go back up to a photo. We do have some other options. 
You can also set and flag images if that's the way you want to do it. So you can flag an image or you can reject an image. I don't use this process. So if it's something that you like, feel free to use it. It's the exact same thing. All of them, they're just doing it a little bit different way with a little bit different symbol. All right, so that one set is rejected. We're gonna undo that. Okay, so let me hit this with zero. And then we're gonna go up here to photo and I'm gonna go to set color label and hit none. So we remove that. Now this is the way that I do this. I take my right hand and I put it on my keyboard and I'm hitting the left and the right arrows to toggle through the image. So I'm going right arrow, right arrow, right arrow, right arrow. All right, left arrow, left arrow, left arrow, left arrow. I don't usually use the left, but occasionally you go back. You could just use your mouse and click on them. I don't find it to be as efficient and as fast. Then my left hand is on the number one. I don't really care if my images have one star or five stars because I'm not using collections to isolate five star images. And to me, I don't really care how many stars it has. Now, if you do wanna give some five stars and some one star, feel free to do it. You can do whatever you want. I just wanna move through the process fast and get it done. What I'm gonna do, remember, right hand on the arrow keys, left hand on the number one, all right? I can also hit two, three, and four, but my finger is just on the number one. So I can start going through and I'm looking at my images. And if I find an image that I like, I can hit the number one and you can see it rates it. And then we'll go on and I'll rate it. And I'll rate it. And I'll rate it. And I'll rate it. I can go back, say, hey, I like that. That one will say, oh, I like that. And then we'll go to that and I'll give it a one and say, you know what, I don't like it. I can hit the number zero, it goes back and we can go through and look at all the rest of the images and that's good. So I've rated the images in this series that I like and you can see they all have one star down here. It's teeny tiny and it's hard to see. Now I'll just click five stars on this one just so you can see it. So five stars, it does light up and give you five stars. All right, we have five stars right there. If I hit one, it's gonna show me one star, telling me here that I have one star. I just like to take a moment to say, the YouTube algorithm really likes it when you watch the whole video, you like the video, and you comment on the video. If you're finding the information in any of these videos helpful, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm gonna be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. Now that I've done that, the cool part about doing this whole culling process is I can now isolate just the ones that I have selected and omit the others. Now, when I say omit, it is not going to delete them, all right? It's just gonna be to hide them from your vision or hide them from the browser right now. So if we come over here to filters and I click this on and I go to rated, in this case, if you flagged them, you always use flagged, but I'm gonna use rated. Now you can see, now I have just the images that I have selected with a star. Now, if I wanna get the images back that I didn't rate, I can go back to camera info. If I wanna see the images that I did not rate, I can go to unrated and it's gonna show me the ones that I did not rate. In this case, I just want rated, so that's what we're gonna go through. And now I'm just seeing the images that I want. Sometimes if you do take a lot of photos, you might have like four or five versions of this and you might need to go through the process a second time. In that case, I would just go through and start adding two stars. All right, so we're gonna make one little change here. You'll notice that it's filtering, but it's only filtering with one star because we told it to only filter with one star. Now, if you do have more stars, and we're just gonna go through here and give some images some random amount of stars. All right, so this one's got five, this one's got five, and this one's got three. I can come over here and say, hey, I want to just filter image with three stars or more, and now it's only gonna show me three stars or more. If I wanna go back to it, I can just click on the one. If I only wanna see images with five stars, 
I can click on the five stars. It's only going to show me images with five stars or higher. And that's the process of how to call inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now we have something new up here now that we have images. You'll notice up here we have something called a histogram. And as I click on different images, notice that the histogram is going to change. The histogram shows you where the data is in your image. So since we have a lot of dark values in this, notice that there's a lot of, of the little mountains over here on the left side, because this side is your shadow side and this side is your highlight side. And if I go to this image where there's a lot of highlights, it shifts. Notice there's a lot of highlights and it's showing this area right here. And then we have some midtones and it's showing it in here. If we go to this where the image is really dark, we're gonna have this big mountain here in the center for the midtones and a big rise right here in the shadows. All this does is show you where the data is. Sometimes you're gonna have images that are dark and they're supposed to be dark. So you're gonna have a lot of information. A lot of people say that this should just be an even mountain. That is far from the truth. This is probably the best lit image and you can see even this has peaks and valleys. It really just shows you where the data is in your image and its value at the time that you have it. It also shows you your shooting data. So in this case, this was shot at ISO 100, a 24 millimeter lens, an f-stop of f3.5 and one four hundredth of a second. I love this in class because it shows me how the students photograph the image and it's really easy for me to tell them how to correct it and what they did wrong or occasionally what they did right. Next thing that we have here are saved presets. And these are the presets that are available in the develop module. And you can see there's actually other ones in there. If you were to click on one of these and we'll just go ahead and click on one, it will give you an effect and you can see how it changed the way that this looked because it's using this preset. Let's do something different so you can see. We'll do a black and white preset. We click this. It's automatically toning it according to that preset. I do not recommend that anybody use this in the library module. If you want to use these when you go over into the develop module that we see right here. Let me open that up just so everybody can see it. If you want to use it in the develop module, that's fine. But this really isn't the best place to be using those options right there. The next thing that we have is white balance. Once again, I don't usually use any of these quick develop settings in the library module, except for one case. If I had a whole bunch of portraits, like headshots that were exactly the same or photos that were the same, like let's say that this person had 10 images that were exactly the same, I can apply these quick settings in library module to those images. And when I do that is usually when I'm creating a gallery, meaning let's say I photographed this woman in all the images, and I'm gonna do this on purpose, were a little bit dark like this. So what I can do is I can make them, this one a little bit brighter, and then I can shift, shift click, so all these would be selected, and I can actually sync the settings, meaning I can sync what I did here to all the images, so if you'd like to see how to sync settings, I can show you how that works. It's not gonna look good here. We'll just make this one look bad. So we'll just brighten this up a whole bunch. So I made this one brighter. And remember, we want to apply it to all these. So I'm gonna hit sync settings. Everything is selected. You can come in here and turn on and off whatever you want. I'll hit synchronize and it's automatically gonna brighten up all those images as you can see to apply exactly what we did here. And you can do this under the library or under the develop module. I'm just gonna hit Command Z to undo that because we don't actually wanna do it. And we'll just take this image back to where it was and we're good to go. So we've done culling. We do have some quick tone controls. I only use this stuff when I'm creating a gallery, meaning uh, let's say I have a client and I took some images and they're maybe a little bit darker or a little bit light. I'll lighten them up so they can see them. And these are just gonna go on a web gallery for them to pick the images that they like. We do have the ability to add some keywording. So here are some keywords that I've used before. They're already set up. We have a keyword list. If we wanna create a keyword list, 
we can come in here and we can change the metadata. So this metadata can be filled out and changed however we want it. And if we want to add some comments, meaning the client might ask you to do something. So you could put in the comments and in this one, it's not supported on this image right here, but you could put like uh, take a mole off left cheek or retouch under eyes, something like that. So if you did need to add a comment, you could. Well, that's it for today's video. I will see you tomorrow and we will take a look at the develop settings inside Adobe Lightroom Classic. We do have a Facebook group and there's a very specific reason I created this. If you want the information, it's in the description below. But a lot of comments I get, people are asking me questions and I cannot help them because I need to see what the issue is. Facebook allows you to either post an image or a video, and it makes it really easy for me to give you the answer to whatever your problem is.